So the scoring, the scoring, the modeling is very specific to, to channel. It's very specific to a campaign as well. Um, so it really is, you, you would build an uplift model to show you or give you the true impact of that particular campaign in a particular channel. Now the control of following customer preferences and, and, and using the right channel is a sort of operational issue. And there's a whole set, if people are interested in operational stuff, there's a whole set of things that Portrait do in, in that area in terms of delivery. But on the analytic front, the model's absolutely taking into account channel as well as message and the very campaign specific and need to be. In terms of data that goes into the model, so typically the modeling inputs are uh, actually almost all the work we do, they're exactly the same modeling data set that the organization's already using to build their other models. And that's how we do our start off comparison is we'll take exactly that same data, just build a different kind of model. And so it's a, it's a mix of behavioral characteristics, product holdings, but also demographics that an organization will, will kind of br bring in. Now, what I think is kind of interesting in there is that it's often external factors that are the things that drive the, the real behavior of, of customers, as we kind of all know. And that's what's behind Wanamaker's you know, half of it I just can't predict. But that's what's behind trying to compare to the control group to see what's really because of the marketing and not an external, an external factor. And those change all the time, which is this one of the things that's hard about Uplift. You have to keep rebuilding these models because things change. And it's a second order effect. So it it's much more driven by market changes, it seems, empirically. Well, that's right, in a way. It's, uh, you know, it's the objective function that you're trying to build your model against. Now, the, the key, key thing that's different about the modeling is um, it's a segment-based model. Each individual is only in one group, and so you have to compare segments of, of people. Uh, and so we have a segment-based algorithm, which makes it a little bit different. But, but yeah, you're quite right. It's, uh, it's all about setting what the objective is and, and making that important thing measurable. It's, a, it's another tool to use on this journey of constant improvement in the marketing. As I kind of said earlier, this, okay, you've got a 40%, 60% saving. Um, you know, most people don't just take that money and put it in the, back in the budget. They use that to, to develop different approaches and different things and different marketing um, campaigns to, you know, attack those, attack, it's probably a negative term, uh, to, to tr appeal to those customers who are, who are not affected by this campaign. How can we work out other ways? So it, you know, it's a great driver for inventing new approaches in, in marketing. Good question. So, so the, your, your starting point is you do need a random control group. So, you know, but you know, if you're doing good database marketing, you should always have control groups to really measure um, the effectiveness of what you're doing. Um, but yeah, you have to, to be able to build an uplift model, you have to have that second population, the control population, to, to actually build the model. And so we often are in situations where there isn't one and we can kind of help um, create one or approximate one, depending on the situations of the, of the campaign. But sometimes, yeah, you, you, we, ha we send people away to go and run another campaign but keep a control group this time. It can happen if they do the control group the wrong way. So yeah, you, you know, you, uh, the control should be completely independent of the targeting. It should be a random, a random control. And then you do the targeting within the, the non-control population. You're quite right if you, and it, and it often happens. Let's take all the non-responders and they'll be our control. Kind of messes up your model. <laughs> So it doesn't have to be much larger, but it does need to be of a reasonable size. And it, it's all tied into the response rate. You basically need you know, a reasonable number of examples of response in the control group, or, or attrition, or retention, or whatever your objective is. And so if, if the response is very small, 
um, you know, less than a percentage point, you, you're going to need s many thousands in your control population so that you've got at least a, reason a statistically significant number of observations um, within the control. That's the key.